welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here today. Today is the 26th, Tuesday the 26th of March, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. You know what? The Fed. They're in that raid hike, hiking cycle. Don't think for one second they would they if they could have continued longer and deeper and, and made uh, rates go higher than they did, that they would have. They stopped, they paused. Now, what are they getting ready to do? Uh, it says, the Fed dot plot suggests that the central banks will cut rates three times in 2024. Now, I'm not so sure that they're going to cut, but I three times but I am I I can tell you what I do believe that they are going to cut at least once but now what it is is they've reached the peak of that cycle and now they're starting to work in the opposite direction what does that mean for everybody out there it means inflation's one Yeah, we're not seeing massive inflation. What is it, 3.8% or something like that right now? It's almost double their 2% their target rate. But now they've raised their 2% target rate. Not, I don't think they've raised it officially, but it's at 2.8%. But they'll have to raise it again, raise it again, their target rate for inflation. Imagine that the Fed's, you know, they just kind of like willy-nilly in the end, they'll, the Fed will be saying, okay, our target rate for inflation is 50%. <laughs> I just joke but I mean that's that's where they're they're going to creep in that direction. They can't they can't control inflation, but they can control their target rate. And so as inflation moves up, their target rate will move up. <laughs> uh, uh, so where are we headed? We're heading toward inflation, guys, and we've rounded the corner now. And we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel where we're going to start to hit the inflation. The real bad, serious inflation up ahead. The Fed's lost the battle. They're not going to do this battle again because they've weakened the economy significantly. And the economy is not going to recover from this weakening they did to it. It would have been much better if the Fed had went into the inflation with a very strong U.S. economy. Instead of raising rates and weakening the economy. That was not the right move. The right move it would have been to go into a hyperinflation with a stronger economy. Uh, once the course was set, you know, I mean, way back in 1914, the course was set for all of these things that are happening now to play out. It was a Ponzi scheme that ultimately leads to a conclusion, but the ones who set this in motion knew that it would take like 100, 100 years or more. And so they weren't worried because they knew that it was going to make them and their and their and their kin rich beyond belief. And they figured, well, a hundred years from now, somebody else will have to deal with the problem of the Ponzi scheme that we've created here, you know. And of course, that Ponzi scheme might have even taken a lot longer to play out if they had stuck to a gold standard. But you know why I say it's a Ponzi scheme, guys? You know, you go into the bank. You give them, uh, say, a $10,000 the bank loans you. Or you say you make a deposit of $10,000 in the bank. So they can loan that money out. They'll loan out 9000 of that deposit money. And then, then in turn, they can loan out. Uh, they can keep doing it until they've got 100000 loaned out from the money that you gave them, originally $10,000. They, they can loan out $100,000. And a little while ago, before they had these, they had the restrictions taken off, they could loan out 100%. But now it's back down to 10%. They have this 10% reserve requirement. But still, it means they can create a whole lot of new money. But what happens when we go into reverse gear of that and the banks stop lending money? then money creation stops. And in this Ponzi scheme, you cannot do that. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see the Fed. This is a very short-term thing right now where loans loan is being restricted by the banking system. Money creation is slowing right down. They can't allow that to continue for very long. 
they're going to have to do something about that so that the banks start to pump the money out again and, and more loans are made into the system because that's the real driver of this system we have here and they can't let that stop and so we're going to head toward inflation now, they've they've basically put the reverse gear on everything including raising rates uh, quantitative tightening on and on and on through the economy and they've slowed this thing down they've slowed down a really hot economy to where right now it's almost ready to crash it's not crashing but it's almost ready to crash they got to take the brakes off now at this point so we're at that juncture right now where they're going to start to pull the handbrake off and inflation hasn't been tamed it's double what it should be and that's that's by their metrics uh, so it's going to run away. They can't go further with this. They're backing the boat up now. Janet Yellen is a captain of the boat. And, you know, I mean, she was, but now it's Federal Chairman Powell. She started to direct the boat down the river, down the Mississippi, big long steamboat, the narrow part of the Mississippi River. You know, and, and then General Powell, Chairman Powell stepped in at the, as the captain of the ship. And he was all steam ahead, you know, ignoring the fact that there's sandbars ahead in the Mississippi. What's going to happen? They're going to hit a sandbar. Try to turn the ship around, they're going to get stuck, <laughs> cross-sided in the river. That's what's going to happen to them. Anyway, we got to move on. A lot, lot to talk about here. The National Guard is being deployed for this eclipse that's coming on the 8th. What the heck? What, what? I've never seen them carry on about an eclipse before. Eclipse, you know, it comes over, it gets dark for an hour or darker. A little, there's a, generally a little bit of light, but in this one, if you're directly under it, I guess there's not going to be any light. It's going to be like nighttime. And then it goes away, and things lighten back up again. Why is that such a big deal? To pull the good, deploy the National Guard for that? It's not. It doesn't do any damage or anything. Or is there something I'm missing here? It says in this article, it says, what in the world do they expect to happen during this eclipse? Question mark. That they're deploying, the National Guard uh, is only supposed to be deployed in emergency situations. And it says the National Guard's being deployed during the Great American Eclipse on April 8th. So this seems kind of weird to me. I guess we're going to have to wait. Maybe the, they know something we don't know. I just don't know, you know. It says Oklahoma's being touted as one of the best states to see the eclipse. I know it's going to come up close to me and probably within 100 miles. And so it's going to get dark where I am here. But it's not going to be totally nighttime. I don't really want to be directly under it. Uh, I'm glad I'm about 100 miles away from the center of the thing. Uh, you know, uh, just something spooky about it. And uh, I would rather just see in part, a part show of it. I, I, I wouldn't want to be all the way away from it where I don't see any of it. But this just could be just about as much as I want to see, you know, when it gets kind of darkish, not completely dark. It's kind of spooky having it get completely dark in the middle of the daytime. Now, that bridge, you know, emergency... Uh, signal was on the bridge before the bridge crashed you guys heard about it a enormous ship in baltimore i mean it was a big ship it crashed into the bridge and the bridge collapsed it says the crew of the cargo ship that ran into rammed into a u.s major bridge in the united states city of baltimore leading to a collapse of the bridge sent out a distress signal shortly before the collision, according to the officials. Uh, thanks to the emergency signal, officials were able to stop the traffic so that no more cars would drive onto the bridge. So they must have had cars on the bridge. It says at least six people are still missing. They must have, got, they must have plunged into the water. 
as you can see you know the the bridge is toppled over and evidently cars went in uh, or possibly cars went in and there's people missing that's not a good situation boy that had a lot of containers on it looks like they were stacked how many tiers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven must be a dozen containers high on the on the deck what about below deck honest gosh it would have had a lot of weight on it now there's compromised routers and there's a site there's cyber attacks it says uh <clears throat> It says state-sponsored hackers are exploiting uh, edge routers, the FBI has claimed. Uh, it says the FBI has warned this week... What on earth is that? The FBI has warned this week that Russian state-backed uh, hackers are using compromised routers to sneak into people's computers... Individuals and business routers were secretly used to perpetrate cyber crimes with the goal of assessing United States government networks, according to the FBI. A joint statement with the National Security Agency and 10 other nations' intelligence services, the FBI urged anyone who uses the affected routers to take certain precautions to avoid having their data stolen. The routers in question are... U-B-I-Q-U-I-T-I. -I -I. Ubiquity? Am I saying that right? Edge routers. And the precautions outlined below in this article include resetting passwords and performing factory hardware resets on these routers. So... The United States and the United Kingdom are accusing China over a sweeping spy campaign that may have hit millions of people. Says Washington, the United States and British officials on Monday filed charges imposing sanctions on accusing Beijing of sweeping cyber espionage campaign. So I guess one thing I just read about was from Russia, and now this is from China. Cyber espionage. That allegedly hit millions of people, including lawmakers, academics, journalists, and companies, including defense contractors. It says authorities on both sides of the Atlantic nicknamed the hacking group Advanced Persistent Threat, or APT-31, they called it. Calling it an army of Chinese ministry state and security officials reeled off the laundry list of targets. White House staffers, United States senators, British parliamentarians, and so on. Wow. What can I say, you know? Uh, uh, going right back to the earliest time of computers, they were making viruses and bugs, and they hacking and all this kind of stuff and they're still at it and except they're getting much more sophisticated now and, and I kind of wish we were on the old system where we used to just didn't have all these computers you know all we had all you'd have for entertainment was a television and you only have a television if you had some money to get a television <laughs> You know, and, and, and radio, television and radio and newspapers. I kind of think that it would just be great if we went back to that and get rid of all these computers. 2440 today for silver. It's down 23 cents. And I'm going to tell you guys what, at this point in time, I see this as something that is a safe place for uh, like a like a safe harbor in a storm silver it's like a real physical silver in your possession I see it as being a safe harbor right now and I I tend to think that we're in for some rather large moves to the upside coming pretty soon on this because this really hasn't went anywhere in ages and, and what you can purchase 
with your dollars, you know, I mean, has, has been eroded. And other things out there are getting more and more and more expensive and silver really isn't going anywhere. But it, it, then on the other side of it, when you take a look at how it's needed in, ev in everything, I just can't see it going down from here at this point. Or, or not going down much anyway. I think the upside potential right now is huge. And I think the downside risk is there, but it's not near the upside potential. Gold, 21.75 today for gold. It's up $5.30. And taking a look at cryptocurrencies today, Bitcoin is still holding below the 70,000 at 69,500. Ethereum is at 35.48 and XRP is at 6.3 cents. The Dow today, we're 96 points to the upside at 39,410. Uh, I, I could see that, that there was a period there where we were in extreme danger of a collapse, like a, of, of severe correction to the Dow Jones and the other markets as well, the other equity markets. Uh, I think we're starting to, as we're starting to move more toward these rate cuts, I think that the window for a huge market crash is starting to close somewhat. Uh, and once the inflation really starts to bite and take hold big time, we start to go into the acceleration phase, which we haven't seen yet. People think, you think inflation's bad? Wait till the acceleration phase. That's when uh, equities tend to do really good in those kind of conditions, but gold and silver even does better, you know. But we're not quite there yet. We're moving in that direction. 82.05 for crude oil today. It's up 10 cents. So 82.05. Taking a look at the U.S. Treasury bonds and we're seeing the 10 year today at 4.25. It's down 2 2 uh 2 tenths of a basis point. And the US 30 years at 4.41 and it's up it's down 1.5 basis points. So the long end is dropping today, but the short in the middle end of the yield curve, we see rising rates today. Uh that would mean that the yield curve inversion is getting uh, worse there. Uh, if we see rates rising on the lower end and the long ends drop, rates are dropping, unchanged or dropping. Taking a look at the U.S. dollar index today at 104.3. The dollar is remaining strong. You know, uh, uh, Japan right now, uh, they're going to, they will sell dollars to protect their currency. So if the Japanese yen comes under a bit of threat for its value, they'll sell dollars. And there's another negative effect to the, to the dollar. Uh, what we have is we have a situation where the dollar is a reserve currency, it's on a Ponzi scheme. It's on a time clock right now. It's losing the last bits of its value, but never make the mistake of thinking that it's not the most powerful of the fiat currencies. So it's even though the dollar, you can have this dollar index actually going up and the dollar losing purchasing power at the same time. Because this is only a comparison against other, mostly the euro. It's a 60% euro uh, against the dollar. Thank you guys for listening to my show. You guys have a great afternoon. I really appreciate my audience out there. 
and we'll catch you on the next show. Bye-bye.